What I've got here is a difficult bounds question, upper bounds, lower bounds. How do I know that? It says by considering bounds. Right, before I tackle this question, I want you to look over here. Right, we know mass divided by volume gives you density. Well, let's suppose we've got something, right, a little cube. Not sure about its mass. It could be 10, could be 20, 30, 40, or 50. Not too sure. Um, wrote it down somewhere, but I've forgotten what it is. Okay, we're just, just pretending. And the volume could be one, two, three, four, or five centimeter cube. Not sure. Now we're going to consider what could be the lowest possible density and the highest possible density given these values. Right, to find the lowest, or if you like, lower bound. Remember, mass goes at the top, volume goes at the bottom. So to find the lowest possible number, uh, you put the lowest number for the mass and the highest number for the volume. That'll be 10 grams for the mass, and then pick the highest value, five for the volume. Density then would be uh, two grams per centimeter cubed. All right, I'm now looking for the highest, highest possible value. Right, for you to do that, uh, you, need to pick the, uh, you need to pick the highest value for the mass, which is 50 grams, and the lowest possible value is one centimeter cubed. Obviously 50 divided by one is 50 grams per centimeter cubed. Right, we're looking at the worst case scenarios, right? So two, it could be the lowest value it could be is two, and the highest value it could be is 50. And that's only because I wasn't certain uh, what the exact mass of this is and what the exact volume of this is uh, but I knew it could be any one of these or these right so here um, I've looked at the lowest and the highest the worst case conditions right now I'm going to tackle this question uh, it is a bounds question upper bound lower bound question because it tells you in the question that you have to consider bounds right, I've underlined it here so James is trying to find the density of a block of wood. The block of wood is in the shape of a cuboid. Here are the dimensions. It's a cuboid. Right. The dimensions of this are given the length, the width, the height, but correct to the nearest millimeters. So I need to find the lower and upper bound for each of these numbers. It will be helpful for me to just put a zero there to find the lower and upper bound. So this kind of looks like money, doesn't it? I know it's not money, but if you think like money, it's helpful. So this one's like £13.20. So you're adding 5p, taking away 5p to find the lower and upper bound for each of these numbers. Right, first of all, I'm gonna find the lower bounds and then I'll find the upper bounds. The lower bound is, well, if you take away five, uh, 5p, that'll give you 13.15. Uh, for the next one, think of, the, think of this like, 16 pounds so if you take away 5p that would be like 15.95 and this one here will be 21.65 for the upper uh, it's like adding 5p that'll be 13.25 16.05 21.75 and always double check that you've got these values right otherwise if you get get it wrong here it's going to have a knock on effect of mistakes later on so just quickly have a check, which is what I'm doing right now. Right, seems fine. Right, now to find the volume of a cuboid, you know you have to multiply all three numbers together. So I'm gonna find the lowest possible value for the volume. Right, I'm looking at the worst case scenarios, the lowest it could be. Timesing all the numbers together, Need my calculator for this. That's the uh, lowest it could be. Uh, the highest. 
I need to times these numbers together now. Right, these are the worst case scenarios for the volume. Right, now moving on to this bit over here, he measures the mass as 1970 grams, correct to the nearest five grams. Now I need to find the lowest and the highest, the lower and upper bounds. Right, half of five gram is 2.5 grams, so I need to add that and then take away that, right? First of all, I'm gonna take away it to find the, lo uh, the lowest possible mass. 1970 take away 2.5. And now the highest possible mass. Um, we're gonna do adding. 1970 add 2.5. Those are the uh, worst case scenarios. Now, the bit that I'm gonna do now is uh, work at the density by considering the bounds. I've already got the bounds, haven't I? The lowest, the highest, lowest and highest, all right? Um, you know the formula MDV, mass density volume, where density is equal to mass divided by volume. Now to get the lowest possible value for density, lowest density, lower bound, I'm gonna pick the smallest value for M and the highest value for V. And I've explained that idea to you right at the beginning of the video. So to pick the lowest possible mass is here. and the highest value for V, the volume, right over here. Highest possible density, the upper bound for the density. For that, I need to pick the biggest value for mass and the smallest value for volume. And I've explained that right at the beginning of the video, why I need to do that. So the highest value for the mass is over here. and the lowest value for volume is this one here. Obviously these are centimeter cubes. I get 0.43 Three. Right, if you compare these numbers, right, it does say in the question, give your answer to a suitable degree of accuracy. Well, the zeros match up, right, the decimal point stays where it is. The fours match up, but there's a difference of two and a three. But if you think about it, if I was to round both of these numbers to two decimal places, well, the top one would come out as 0 0.43 because you look at the second digit, if it's five or more, it is. So then it, instead of becomes 0 0.42, it becomes 0 0.43. So if you apply the same thing to the bottom number as well, if you round this bottom number here to two decimal places, you still get 0 0.43. Because you look at the second digit there 
ask yourself the question, is it five or more? No, so you just keep it at 0.43. So you notice these two numbers are the same. We've rounded to a suitable degree of accuracy, uh, i.e. two decimal places, and we get 0.43 from both worst case scenarios, right? When you round to two decimal places, we get 0 0.43 is your answer.